Christian tradition says there are four Gospels. Archaeologists say there are more, many more, hidden and banned by the early church. What is in these newly discovered scriptures, and why were they forbidden for centuries? Winter 1886. French archaeologists dig for artifacts in the Christian section of a cemetery in Upper Egypt. Suddenly, they make a discovery. What they uncover is the long-forgotten grave of a monk buried in the 8th century. But the real find is what the monk is taking with him to the next world. Those who buried the monk apparently took this little papyrus book and put it with the monk. So that in a way he could go into the next life with one of his favorite books. It includes not Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, but it includes the Gospel of Peter. The book apparently is an actual gospel, a first-hand account of the life of Jesus, yet the text claims to have been written by the Apostle Peter. For nearly 2,000 years, everything Christians knew about Jesus came from the Gospels of the Christian Bible, accounts by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Could this be an actual lost account of the life of Jesus, written by Simon Peter, the hand-picked leader of the Apostles? The discovery set off shockwaves throughout the world of biblical scholarship, and that shockwave continues as new Gospels, lost Gospels, emerge from numerous archaeological digs. The Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, and even the Gospel of Judas. The discovery of the lost Gospels also reveals a secret battle now forgotten, but once vital. A battle for the soul of Christianity. On the one side is a devout group calling for a direct spiritual relationship with God, with their own set of Gospels. On the other side, a growing hierarchy of Orthodox Christianity that accepts only four Gospels. The result of this battle would determine the future of Christianity. But at the very beginning days of the faith, there literally was no gospel and no Christian Bible. Christianity begins around the year 30 AD with a group of Jews who follow the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. The stories of Jesus were not written down for decades. Scholars believe the earliest gospel, the Gospel of Mark, was written about 70 AD, 40 years after the death of Jesus. But his was not the only gospel. By the year 200 AD, there were not just the four gospels, there may have been as many as 50. They bore titles like the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of the Hebrews, and the Revelation of Peter. Some of these books were mentioned by ancient writers, but until recently, these Gospels had all disappeared. What happened to them, and why are there only four Gospels today? The answer comes down less to faith and more to politics. The Bible didn't fall out of the sky. The Bible was finally put together by Christian thinkers who represented a particular point of view. The surprising fact is that the Christian Bible as we know it didn't really emerge until 300 years after the death of Jesus. And the man who determined the content of the Christian Bible had a powerful agenda that had little to do with religion. In 312 AD, a Roman emperor named Constantine, a pagan who believed in multiple gods, claimed to have had a vision of the cross before a battle. After his victory, he became a convert to the religion of Christianity. 
eventually making it the semi-official state religion. Constantine wanted to harness this new religion in order to unify a Roman Empire that was falling apart. At that time, Christianity was a loosely organized religion, a collection of churches with diverse beliefs and diverse scriptures. The emperor intended to change that. In 325 AD, Emperor Constantine convenes the Council of Nicaea to decide the basic tenets of Christianity. He brings together the most powerful church leaders from around the world to discuss legalizing a formal Christian religion. One of the interesting things is, it becomes clear that what he is primarily interested in is in unity. He wants the Christian religion to provide the ideological basis for the empire. The goal of Constantine's council was to unify the faith, both religiously and politically. After weeks of debate, the various bishops and priests agree on a set of principles that unify all of Christianity and place the religion firmly under the control of the emperor. And he then used his authority to say, okay guys, this is it things got drastically changed under Constantine. We have a complete redefinition of how God is to be understood. God now is the protector of the state, which then seeks to use the religion for its own purposes, to unify everything, because you can't have much dissent and run a state. Constantine also unified the Christian Gospels and limited the Gospels he considered fit for the state religion. Though the Nicene Council did not officially decide on the content of the Christian Bible, Constantine made it clear which Gospels he considered acceptable. He commissioned the creation of 50 copies of a Christian Bible, which contained only the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What happened to the other Gospels? In 382 AD, another church council literally banned Christians from reading them. Under the Christian emperor Theodosius, all other Gospels were considered heresy. Were banned or buried, their owners arrested and sometimes killed. There were all these other texts that real believing Christians loved. And for a long time, it must have been read until the bishops came around to say, thou shalt not read this, but thou shalt read that. What was contained in these lost gospels? What made them so threatening that they had to be banned or destroyed? No one knew for nearly 2,000 years. But in 1886, the gospel of Peter emerged from the sands of the Egyptian desert. Other astonishing discoveries followed in the 20th century. The Gospels of Thomas, of Mary Magdalene, of Judas. These lost Gospels reveal a very different view of Jesus. A different approach to spirituality. years, Christians believed there were only four Gospels that told the story of Jesus of Nazareth. In 1886, the Gospel of Peter was the first lost Gospel discovered in centuries, suggesting the existence of a secret history of forbidden scriptures. In 1945, a remarkable discovery unearthed a large collection of lost Gospels and changed forever the history of Christianity. In Egypt, near a town called Nag Hammadi, a farmer and his companions found a sealed clay jar with an 1,800-year-old payload. The jar contained 52 separate texts with titles like the Acts of Peter, the Apocalypse of James, and the Gospel of Thomas. 
These were literal lost gospels, mentioned by ancient writers, but apparently buried after the Roman Emperor Constantine's consolidation of power in 325 AD. The scriptures had only existed as legends until now. And perhaps the most surprising of these lost scriptures was the Gospel of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas is a fascinating document. It was translated from Greek to Coptic, and it possesses sayings of Jesus. And a lot of the things that are contained within the Gospel of Thomas are also found in the New Testament. The difference being that the Gospel of Thomas is a Gnostic Gospel. The Gnostics were a sect of early Christianity and that disagreed with many of the precepts of the emerging Christian hierarchy. Gnosis is a Greek word meaning knowledge and Gnostic means one who knows. And if they could find that peace of God within, that true humanity within, why did they need to have any priest or any bishop? They could march to the beat of their own drummer. It says, when you know yourselves, then you will be known and you will understand that you are children of the living Father. In other words, if Jesus can be taken as a child of God, so are all of us sons and daughters of God. He doesn't have anything that we can't have. We can have the same kind of relationship to the divine, that same kind of oneness with God. The Gospel of Thomas calls for a personal connection to God without the need for organized churches, priests, and bishops. There were lots of priests and bishops who took offense at these Gnostics who had their own way, had their direct kind of line, their red telephone to the divine. That did not sit well with the authority figures in the church. And that may be the reason the Gospel of Thomas was considered heresy. The independence of Gnostic beliefs undermined the church hierarchy. The Gnostics believed their own Gospels were just as valid, if not more so, than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the case of the Gospel of Thomas, they may have been right. When these Gnostic Gospels were discovered in 1945, a disturbing issue arose. It turned out that the lost Gospel of Thomas could conceivably be older than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There is a debate among scholars uh, regarding how to date the Gospel of Thomas. What we do know is that we have some very early Greek papyri of the Gospel of Thomas. And it looks as if portions of the Gospel of Thomas are very early. In fact, portions of the Gospel of Thomas may go back to the earliest days of the church. Most scholars believe the four traditional Gospels were written within a generation of the death of Jesus, 40 to 60 years after the events actually took place. But material in the Gospel of Thomas may be older, based on its simpler content. If the Gospel of Thomas is really older than the four traditional Gospels, does that mean it is closer to the message of Jesus? And if this is so, does that mean the Christian Bible is literally incomplete? The answer may lie in finding the exact date the Gospel was written. The Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute, or MCI, deploys a team of specialists and scientists to extract the secrets of ancient documents. What we do is really like a detective. Our scientists would look with different kinds of instrumentation to understand really what it is, where it came from in the world. Scholars search for clues to the age of a gospel in the document's literal paper and ink. I feel like I can sometimes get into the head of the maker 
especially because a conservator needs to develop kind of a backwards x-ray vision. You have this object in front of you and it's come to you in its actual state and its condition and you have to think about all the things that happened to it. The Gospel of Thomas found at Nag Hammadi was given a carbon-14 test. The pages revealed that the copy was from approximately 300 to 400 AD. The oldest copies of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John come from approximately the same time. But scholars agree that all these Gospels must have been copies of much older texts, because ancient writers refer to these Gospels by 150 AD. The exact age of the Gospel of Thomas is elusive and controversial. Is it older and more accurate than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Until a more ancient copy is found, the question remains a mystery. But no matter its age, the Gospel of Thomas reveals a battle within Christianity between two camps. The traditional church had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John on their side. But the Gnostics claim to have the support of Mary Magdalene herself. For centuries, Christians believed that there were only four Gospels that revealed the life and message of Jesus of Nazareth. But that belief changed in the late 1800s with the discovery of the first lost Gospels. One of the most compelling of these forgotten scriptures was discovered in Egypt in 1896. A gospel with a very surprising author. It is a gospel written in the name of a woman. And not just any woman, but apparently Mary Magdalene. And not the Mary Magdalene, who has a role in the church, who is the repentant whore, and so forth. This is Mary Magdalene, who is a beloved disciple. She's a part of the inner circle. Only a few fragments survive, but they put into sharp focus Mary's true significance. If the Gospel of Mary is authentic, it means that women were once powerful leaders in the Christian church. It means that Mary Magdalene was not a reformed prostitute, but the leader of the apostles. And in a religion dominated for centuries by men, it means the most important Gospel was written in the name of a woman. The Gospel of Mary details the secret instructions that Jesus tells only to Mary. Secrets about life, death, and heaven. In this gospel, Jesus reveals certain things about the afterlife to Mary in very Gnostic kinds of terms. The afterlife in the four traditional gospels is described as a blissful paradise. But in the gospel of Mary, the afterlife involves a strange journey of the soul after death, in which the dead person encounters angelic and demonic beings as the soul makes its way to heaven. It is only to Mary that Jesus reveals this secret journey of the soul. The Gospel reports that Peter, the leader of the Apostles, reacts explosively to this revelation. Peter says, did he really speak with a woman without our knowledge? Are we to turn about and all listen to her? Did he prefer her to us? In the Gospel, the Apostles override Peter's denunciation and support Mary, saying, if the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? What is significant is that there was a spiritual kind of bond, that Mary was thought to be a person of insight, a leader somebody who had an ability to motivate others and that was her real gift she understood the mind of Jesus and was able to communicate that this is a gospel that gives a very different kind of view of what the message of Jesus is and gives Mary Magdalene as the one who understands that point of view in a way that the other disciples did not but is this text a real gospel 
the eyewitness account of Mary Magdalene? If so, it might change Christian history and revolutionize the role of women in the Christian church. The key lies in the gospel's age. Is it older than the four traditional gospels? And could it have been written by Mary Magdalene herself? The Gospel of Mary was first discovered in 1896 in Achman, Egypt. Carbon dating reveals this text was hand copied in the 5th century. But over the years, fragments of the Gospel of Mary have emerged elsewhere in Egypt, and they are much older. New breakthroughs in technology can help refine the exact date of even the smallest fragments of ancient text. Using the 3D microscope allows scientists to focus on the details that provide clues to its age. At this level of detail, a modern sample of papyrus bears no resemblance to an ancient text. If this were 2,000 years old, the uh, surface would not be so shiny. It would be more matte because uh, fibers would be uh, worn and creating a sort of a nap to, it, to the surface, almost like suede like these help provide a very precise date for the oldest fragments of the Gospel of Mary. They were written approximately 200 AD. The language and vocabulary also suggest that the Gospel of Mary was written during the second century and not during the time of Jesus. Thus it is highly unlikely that Mary Magdalene wrote the Gospel that bears her name. Most scholars believe it was created by a Gnostic Christian during the second century who wanted to invoke the authority of the female apostle. We don't know who the author was, but many would imagine that there really is a woman's voice and a woman's perspective that is to be seen here. And it may be the case that finally there is a voice that is heard that is stifled in the other Gospels. Perhaps more importantly, the Gospel of Mary reveals a power struggle in the early church about the role of women. The whole idea of leadership of women is, uh, I think, a very exciting thing to look at uh, in this early Christian history. And the Gospel of Mary is a kind of a testimony to that. The fact that Mary is a leader and a woman is a revolutionary concept in the early church. The fact that there can be a Gospel of Mary indicates something of the fact that there were in fact folks like the Gnostics who are much more open to the inclusion of women as full members of the community. In fact, some of the people in the emerging Orthodox Church complained about this. You mean there are some women that are administering the sacraments? There are women that are ordained among these Gnostics? Shame on them. The Gnostics saw no shame in that. And so for there to be a text like a Gospel of Mary is perfectly in line with a Gnostic point of view. Before the Council of Nicaea, Christianity was not a structured organization. For its first 300 years, the Christian religion was a diverse faith, with various beliefs and various Gospels. But by the year 300 AD, the Gnostic movement within the religion was seen as a threat to the hierarchy of priests and bishops. The Gnostics and their Gospels emphasized a personal relationship with God, without the need of a priest or an organized religious body. They really believed that there was something within, that they had a, a direct kind of access to the divine. They didn't really need to have priests and bishops. They didn't have to listen to that kind of authority. Meanwhile, an emerging Christian hierarchy was getting the attention of Roman politicians. With the Nicene Council in 325 AD, the Emperor Constantine solidified the power base of the more orthodox bishops and their hierarchy. The four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were in. The 
Gnostic Gospels were out. At least officially. It's important to keep in mind that these other Gospels that are not in the New Testament were in fact read by people and appreciated and loved by people for a long time. But what does this historic evolution of the New Testament say about the legitimacy of the Lost Gospels? The study of the Lost Gospels is actually very fascinating. It helps us to understand the cultural pressures that Christianity was under and what it was dealing with. It's rather fascinating to imagine what might have happened at Nicaea and after that if a Gnostic perspective might have carried the day. I would imagine that there would have been more of a mystical sense, more of an inner sense of what it means to be motivated as a follower of Jesus. It would have been a very different church with different characteristics and a different kind of sense, a more mystical sense. But the Gnostics did not carry the day at Nicaea. And somewhere in a monastery in the Egyptian desert, a group of Gnostic monks must have wondered about the fate of their beloved Gospels. They must have loved this kind of literature until that fateful day that Archbishop Athanasius of Alexandria announced to all the monks, it's time to throw away the heretical books and read the biblical books. Perhaps with a heavy heart, the monks took these precious books of the Nag Hammadi Library and they couldn't destroy them. So they hid them in a jar and they would last forever or almost forever, at least until we could find them in our day and read them anew. For millennia, the Holy Bible with the four Gospels of the New Testament has been held as the true story of Jesus. Some believe the lost Gospels reveal the road not taken for Christianity. Others believe the road was not taken for a reason. You know, the expression is that sometimes history is written by the winners. And the idea is that now the losers get to speak. And there is some value in hearing losers speak. But the other half of the expression needs to be said, that sometimes the winners deserved to win. Centuries after they were consigned to the sands of the desert, the lost Gospels remain controversial to this day. And perhaps this very fact is a testament to the power of the written word to convey faith, hope, and mystery across the centuries and around the world.
Lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want, and that in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y And this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. Es la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I 
thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de Los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para, bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti, si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So, uh, it's... This is the game part. If uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person. But if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out. And it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada. Y si, por ejemplo... Okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have, have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. Bueno, ahora voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los dedos de Simpsons. Now I'll show some pictures of the fingers of Simpson. The four fingers, los cuatro dedos y cinco dedos de Dios. The four fingers and five fingers of God of Simpsons. Thirteenth of March.
Right now, there are more people on the internet than there were on the planet in 1960. We're raising money. And it's easier to be discovered than ever before. It takes a full team to make each one of our videos. But the internet needs better software to help us reward one another for our work. Advertisers value you differently. They say that 1,000 of you is only worth $6. Any help is very much appreciated. Please fund this project. We need your help. Today I got an idea what you can do to lo que tú también tú puedes hacer. Bueno, que en realidad todo el mundo puede hacer si quiere. Uh, actually, what everybody can do if you want. Currently and historically. Opposed to secret societies, secret oaths, and a secret proceedings. We decided long ago the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment. A pertinent fact far outweighs the dangers we just cited to justify it. Face the facts, join our hands, make a stand. Uh -huh. It's time to gather plans, get the shot, take the chance. Till there is no one left, stay correct to the death. They can't ever break a freedom, we will never let them. The corrupt politics is killing the system. Cynicism is it, and it's everything that you witness. They tell you what to think, make you believe that they're the realness. They feed us full of lies, and yet we always forgive them. Huh? It's all conspiracy, and if you feed an inner witch, you're the puppet. The government's pulling strings from above you. It's time for the introduction to truth. Let's start a movement. We've all been brainwashed. They believe that we all are stupid. We believe in what we see and whatever our ears are hearing. But if you look close, listen, gather your own opinion. You'll understand all the lies, lines, and what's between them. This world is not your oyster. This world is a fucking prison. Come on. happening in our nation. We want to stand up for the fear of assassination. So they strip us of everything. We stand there and just take it. We're scared to make a stand a false flag operation. Research Illuminati. Find out by 9-11. You see they line their pockets. Don't believe the lies they tell you. Find to seek the truth. Realize we need to do whatever it is we can to protect our livelihood. It's time for us to do when the conspiracy or not. They owe some explanations to the questions that we got. What are the skull and bones? What is flying beneath? All these secretive means got you lying between your teeth. What's with the Bilderberg? I'm burning your effigies. I'm praying to Lucifer. How 
Satanist can you be while all of the time praying you believing in the peace just to keep up appearances within Christianity? Through the night we gon' fight and close the eye and hope a